Hi there folks, with all the excitement of Copilot and generating content for documents, I wanted to see if it was possible to create my own Cloudflow to orchestrate the creation of PowerPoint decks. So in this particular video, I'm going to show you how I built this deck and others using generative AI from Azure in the form of the OpenAI GPT services and also DAL-E. So all the content you're seeing on right now is based on a single prompt. I've passed that into my flow. I've called upon these services to generate both the text and the images. And then off the back of that, I have populated a PowerPoint slide deck using the new Encodian action. So if that's something that interests you, please make sure you like and subscribe. And without further ado, let's jump into the demonstration. So if I kick things off from the new flow designer, I have my flow here that will enable me to generate slides based on a prompt. And if I pop open that manual trigger, you'll see that I have an input parameter for a content idea. If I provide an input there, we will generate some slides based on that subject or theme. So along the lines of Copilot and being able to generate PowerPoint slide decks, I have generated my own flow that will do that using Azure OpenAI services, including the GPT service for the text, but also the DALI service for generating images for my slides. And then I'll bring in the encoding connector, which enables me to populate and then merge slides in order for me to create a completed slide deck. So over on the right hand side, you can see I already have a question, what does this flow do? And if we run that, hopefully it will confirm exactly as I've described a flow that will generate some PowerPoint slides based on a prompt using AI models. And ultimately it will save that file into a SharePoint folder. So first of all, I would like to demonstrate that and build a slide deck in hopefully just under a minute. And then I'll walk through that flow and show you how it all comes together and I involve the services from Azure in order to generate that content. So my content idea is to create 10 pages about living in Scotland, the views, the weather and the places to visit. And if I run that flow and sit back, we'll hopefully see that new slide deck being created. So in just under a minute, I have now generated a PowerPoint slide deck using generative AI, both text and images generated through DALI, and of course involved that populate PowerPoint action from Encodian, which then allows me to merge and create a final PowerPoint slide deck. And I'll go through this history in more detail after I've demonstrated the content of our deck. Moving across onto my SharePoint site, I have my completed deck. And if we pop that open and play that slide deck, we can see the contents of the generative AI, the fact that Scotland has a population of 5.5 million, but also the image that's been generated off the back of that image prompt that we sent off to DALI. So as I work my way through the slides, I've got some great things to call out there about the Scottish Highlands and the Isle of Skye, the fact that Scotland is indeed a cold place and it's raining outside right now, which is not unusual to be honest. And as I move through some call outs to Edinburgh and Glasgow, and again, the Isle of Skye, our traditional dis dishes like haggis, neeps and tatties, the fact that we have whiskey and also beer, some of the culture, and you can see the images that were generated there by Dali include kilts with the sporrans on the back of the kilt, which I would suggest is not the traditional way of wearing it. But again, as I work my way through the rest of the slide contents and the generated images, a hill walking scene here our Scott Rail trains, which look a bit bashed in that particular image, and then the fact that we have a great education system in the form of our universities, and I'd like to call it Edinburgh Uni, because that's where, in fact, I attended back in 1998 when I was just a young lad. So in conclusion, Scotland is a cracking place, and we've captured that in this 10-slide deck. I didn't generate any of this content. All I did was provide a very basic prompt and ran my Power Automate Cloudflow. Now, how did that all come together? So before we go and have a look at my flow in more detail, I want to call out the services that I've used in order to create this content. First up is Azure in the form of the OpenAI service. I have my own instance and it's the completions endpoint or API, the GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct. And it's here that you can send off a prompt and generate some data based on all of these lovely parameters over on the right hand side. So within my flow, I call this endpoint as an API, I use the HTTP connector, I can authenticate, I can send off an instruction, and I can generate the content for my slides. As an example, if I jump across onto my flow and go to the completion prompt, I can copy that text from the output here using this lovely new copy 
icon within our designer, move back to my completions playground and paste that in. And that includes the prompt here to create 10 pages about living in Scotland. And I can run that through the playground to see what sort of output will be created. And we can see now the structure of the data, the JSON output, the fact that it creates these slides based on the title, the page, the content, and the image prompt. Now for this particular example, it's ended prematurely. That's based on the maximum token length. I've currently got a limit of 1,000. I can have up to 4,000. I could regenerate, and hopefully we'll get all of the slides based on another example of generative content. Now remember, it won't always match the original content that's been generated, but hopefully it gives you a feel of what's happening behind the scenes. I'm calling this API, I'm generating content, and it outputs that content in the form of a JSON array. Now, if we take one of these image prompts, we've got here an image of Edinburgh Castle. If I go and copy that prompt, I can move across onto DALL-E, which is another service that's available in Azure OpenAI, albeit in preview. And if I was to paste that prompt in here and generate, this is ultimately what I'm doing in my flow. I'm hitting this API endpoint using those prompts that I've generated from the completions prompt and then generating 10 images that I can then embed into my PowerPoint presentation. Now, whilst we wait for that to complete, if we pop open this view code, we can see the code in JSON, what's been sent. We have a prompt, we have a couple of parameters, but ultimately we're hitting an endpoint here and including a key. So in order for me to do that via Power Automate, I use the HTTP action, I hit that endpoint, I provide this as a body, and I provide this authentication key in order to allow me to instruct the API to generate an image. And as if by magic, we now have our image of Edinburgh Castle. And of course that repeats 10 times based on there being 10 slides. And then whilst this is an asynchronous task, we saw it took a while there for the images to generate, we have to have a do until within our Power Automate flow to enable us to pull that endpoint and check to see has that image been generated before we can download it. Moving across onto the Encodian documentation, I just want to call out the documentation here for this new action. We have a populate PowerPoint. It allows us to pass an object of data and supply tags within our PowerPoint slide deck. So we can see we have an object with company name as the key and Encodian as the value. And then we have a company name tag in those opening and closing brackets and those arrows. And then with that, we can pass this data into an action, the populate PowerPoint action, and that will then populate that template, and the output can be used to create a file, which is what we'll see later on in my flow. Just to validate that, if I go back into my SharePoint site and pop open this template PowerPoint slide, you'll see that I have a placeholder for my title, a placeholder for my image, which includes a fit height property so that it always fits into the space that I've allocated, the content, and also the page number. And these are all values that come through in the array that's generated by the chat GPT model. And of course, the image which comes back from DALI, which I actually append to the array based on that image prompt that I've sent off to DALI in the first place. So for those that are interested in hanging about to see how I built the Power Automate flow, you'll notice I'm currently in the classic view for history. That's because unfortunately things went wrong when I was in the new designer and there's no way for me to get back into the history for that new designer. So therefore I will cover the history in the classic, but I'll go back into the new designer for the edit, hopefully the way forward into the new designer. Anyway, if we look at this flow, I have my manual trigger. We can see that content idea that I've captured as a result of providing an input parameter. And then if we jump into our first scope, or first and only scope, I have my API key and a compose. I have my completion prompt, which is my prompt for this uh, API call that I'm going to do, including specifying the JSON format and also including that uh, input parameter, creating 10 pages about living in Scotland. Of course, I pass that on to the HTTP endpoint, which is in relation to the OpenAI service that I demonstrated. I'm using the specific API endpoint for the completions prompt on GPT 3.5. But in response, we can see in the body, somewhere in amongst there, we have text. It's actually part of a choices array. We get the text, and that is my JSON. So living in Scotland, uh, one of 10, etc. I need to convert that from text 
into JSON, which is what I do in this compose response. And it's here that if I pop open my outputs, we can see all of those objects within the array for the title page and content and the image prompt. Remember at this point, I haven't generated an image. I've simply asked my prompt to create an image prompt based on the content of the slide. As we move down the slide, I then have a get file content using path. And all that's doing is getting the template PowerPoint that I showed you that has those lovely little tags in there for Encodian. We could have multiple templates. We can mix things up a bit. We could have random templates that are selected to, to get different layouts. I did think about that. And maybe I could do a video about that as a possibility if there's interest. Into an apply to each, all I'm doing here is I'm looping through that array that I've generated from the GPT that has my image prompts and I'm passing it on to DALI and asking it to generate an image. Again, all of that's hidden, but we'll see it in edit. What we get back is an ID for that job and a status to say it's not running. So at this point, because it's an asynchronous task, we're basically requesting that DALI generates an image. It says, sure, here's an ID, I'm not running, and it will get round to it, it will process that image. In parallel, I'm sending off 10 requests to that endpoint, and then I'm composing those IDs here, as you see in a compose, which means I can then use that outputs expression that lets me bring back all these IDs into an array, and therefore I can loop through those IDs and start pinging that endpoint. And that's what I'm doing here. So the apply to each image is looping through all, all those image IDs. And then I have a do until for each of those images that's hitting the endpoint and saying, where is my image? Where is my image? And if I go into the next stage of this do until, we'll see here it's gone from one of two, which says the job is running for that particular ID, to the second retry, which is basically a URL back to say, here's your image, it's been generated, the status is succeeded. So I have a delay here, just a nominal delay of five seconds, and I keep pinging that endpoint to say, where's my image? I do that for all 10 images, and it looks like as I flick through them, they're all taking uh, two retries by the looks of it. Moving down, we have the compose image, which is a purely grabbing that URL from the above HTTP action for each of those image requests. Once I've got that URL, I use the HTTP request, I get to that URL to get the base64 encoding of that image. So I purely hit that URL, which contains the image based on the DALI endpoint, and get the file content. In the compose, I'm just bringing that base64 response into the compose so I can then use it in my populate PowerPoint. Now I've been a bit sneaky in my populate PowerPoint. I'm doing an awful, awful lot in one go. I'm actually taking the object from above. So if we scroll all the way up to the top and remind ourselves, we've got this uh, output from our response. This is the object for each of the loops. It has an image prompt, but it doesn't have an image. So what I do is I actually use the add property to add the image back into this object. And then I can use it to pass across into the encoding action and populate that template based on each image. That then gives me a compose, not going to see much here, but it is the output of our PowerPoint. And there's logic behind this reasoning, which we'll see in the edit. Then I simply merge all 10 of them and, of course, create a file based on the output of this merge presentation. So that's the history. It happened very quickly. It all happens in about a minute. It's super efficient. When I first built it, it took about eight minutes or so because I didn't have concurrency. I had a lot of dependencies. I had variables. You can see in this flow, there are zero variables in order to achieve this logic. So jumping over into this new editor, I have my API key in that compose. I have my completion prompt. And now with everything over the left-hand side, we've got plenty of screen estate to explore what's happening in the input for my compose. But you can see this familiar prompt, all the details and a sample array, including the dynamic value for the trigger body text, i.e. the value that's provided as part of this manual trigger. We can now see a bit more about our HTTP call. I'm hitting my endpoint here, my DB ChatGPT POC on OpenAI on Azure, and I'm providing that API key from the compose to the side here, and I have my body, which includes a prompt temperature, which affects 
how crazy our uh, GPT model will go. I've gone for something in the middle, so 0 0.5, which should mean we get some interesting but trustworthy content, hopefully. Maximum tokens, which I've stuck up to 2,000. I think the maximum on this model is 4,000. That basically includes everything that I've sent and everything that I receive back. Onto our compose is a simple expression. I'm taking the choices array that we saw in the history and I'm getting the first text key back and then wrapping that in JSON. So I convert that text into valid JSON, which then ultimately allows me to use it in an apply to each. The get file content, straightforward. We're getting that, that template. Our apply to each is based on the output, our compose response, so that one that uh, brings back the data from our HTTP call to the OpenAI model. And then within that, I'm creating an image. So I, again, I'm hitting an endpoint. This endpoint is for generating images off of DALI. And I'm simply posting my key again from that compose above with my body, including the image prompt. So items apply to each and then in square brackets, image prompt, because that's the structure of the array that I've asked GPT to create for me. I then have my compose image IDs, which is simply getting the ID from the body. So if I could uh, hover over there, we can see it's body, HTTP, image, create image, and then in the single quotes, ID. I'm literally getting the ID back from this HTTP call and sticking it into a compose. Now with a little trick that we've probably seen before is using range. So I've gone with range and the length of the compose image IDs. So there are 10 image IDs in this particular slide. There could be seven another day, four another day, depending on what I've requested in my prompt. This is completely dynamic and it will give me an array from zero based on the range of numbers. So if there was 10, zero through to nine, and I can use this number now in my expressions to retrieve values from the array using integer indexes. Next up, we move into our do until, and it's here that we're checking the status of the get image HTTP call. We're calling that DALI endpoint to say, has my image been created? We're checking that status to see, has it equal succeeded? If it has, we break out the do until. If it hasn't, we're going to, of course, wait five seconds with this delay, and then we're going to retry hitting this DALI endpoint with the ID. And it's here you probably want to pay attention to the expression. It's based on the outputs of the compose image IDs. This is a little trick that brings all of the IDs from the apply to each above into an array and then we can call them by integer indexes. So item is what you see in the middle of the square brackets. That is the zero, the one, the two, the three, all the way up to nine. So that enables us through that apply to each loop to get the image ID using an integer index. We pass it to that endpoint. We loop through it in the do until, check to see if of course the condition is equal to succeeded if it does or when it does, hopefully, after up to 60 attempts, we move on to the next part of the flow, which is to get the image URL. And it's here, again, I'll share the expression. You can see that there could be multiple URLs. When you hit the endpoint, you can actually specify the number of images to generate. I'm only wanting the first image, therefore I get from the result data array the first object, which is integer zero. Of course, I could use the first expression, and then I'm grabbing the URL. With that URL, I then have an HTTP action that uses the output from that compose image, which is the URL, to get. So I'm literally, as if I was loading up a browser, hitting that URL with a get to get that image downloaded. Once I've got that response, I can use it, and we have another expression for the image content, so the body of the HTTP image action above. We're getting back the content, which is the base64 encoding of that image. We can then use that in our populate PowerPoint. The populate PowerPoint is then using the file content. So we have that get file content action further up in our flow. We're now using that, passing that file con content across, and then the JSON data that we pass is interesting to say the least, but this is all about efficiency and all about learning something new. So if you have a look at this particular expression, it's add property. And what we're doing is we are adding a property to the compose response. Now our compose response is that original array of data that we got back from ChatGPT that included all our values. And then we are using the items of the apply to each image. So what that means is 
each of those numbers, the 0, the 1, the 2, the 3, the 4, all the way up to 9. So that's enabling us to get the object based on the integer for each of our responses that we've got back from ChatGPT. Then we are adding a new key. That new key is called PPT image. And if you remember looking at the screenshot of our PowerPoint, there was a placeholder. And then the final value is what do we want the value of the key to be? The key being PPT image, the value being output of the compose, which is the base64 encoding of my image. So I pass across that base64 encoding in a new object that we've created using this add property expression and that enables us to then populate PowerPoint with Encodian. Off the back of all that we then just construct the file name and file content of the PowerPoint that's just been generated from the populate PowerPoint action. This is what's required in the merge action that's below. So we've got a merge presentations action below. This is the, the format that it requires. I'm using a random GUID in order to generate a file name. It's a requirement. I tried it without the file name, but um, the action requires it. And then I've constructed the file content, which includes a content type and also a content. And that is based on the body file content that's come back from the populate PowerPoint action. So with that all inside a compose, we're then able to use the good old trick again using outputs. We can call outputs with compose PPTS and that will bring back the contents of all those compose actions within that loop above into a single array and we can pass that single array into the merge presentations action which includes the files, the file content and of course the response that we get back is then used in this create file. It's simply the file content that comes back from the merge presentation. I'm using the GUID and test hyphen and of course the file extension and I save that to my SharePoint site. We now have a presentation to go and talk about. So how about I give it one more try? So as the final part to my demonstration, again giving Power Automate combined with Azure OpenAI, both uh, GPT and DALI, I thought I'd give it the opportunity to produce me a seven slide deck to tell you about my own experiences with heart disease. I had a cardiac arrest just over three years ago in 2020 at the beginning of lockdown. I have ARVC, I have an ICD, and I have a pacemaker. So I thought it'd be useful to put it to the test and see if it can put together a nice short slide deck for me to just highlight some awareness about heart disease and these devices and potential AI opportunities for research. So I can see that the flow has successfully completed. It's happened again in probably just under a minute on this occasion. If I jump across onto my SharePoint site, I can fire up my slide deck. I can already see that I've got the seven slides that I requested. So heart disease is indeed a cause of death globally, and I have ARVC, which is arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. It's a genetic condition. ICD is an implantable cardiac defibrillator, and uh, it is a device that will shock me, very much like the packs you see in shops to... Uh, recover people from cardiac arrests. I have one of them built in under my skin. So an intravenous ICD, as you can see, is usually placed inside the body, usually near the heart, connected to the heart through wires, but I had mine removed at the beginning of the year because it caused complications and a blockage to my heart, an SVC obstruction it's called. So instead, I had a subcutaneous ICD fitted, which actually goes under my skin, just underneath my armpit, and instead of having wires into my heart, I have a lead that's underneath my um, chest, just above my rib cage, and allows me to shock me through my rib cage. And therefore, there are lower risks, but it's less accurate in terms of detecting arrests, so more prone to um, shocks. Pacemakers are used to treat slow heart rhythms, and unfortunately, as a result of being on a drug, I ended up with a slow heart rhythm. So I ended up with a pacemaker, but obviously I didn't want a pacemaker that had leads. So I went with a leadless pacemaker, which is very much like a little battery that goes inside your heart, is installed via an artery in your groin, and uh, it's wedged into the side of your heart, for a better word and uh, connected to wirelessly using RFID or low transmission technologies. 
And then finally, how can AI be involved in potential research within heart disease? Hopefully, it'll be able to crunch large amount of data, look for trends, and ultimately find a solution to both my condition but uh, others across the world. That's my hope. It's worth noting at this point that the images generated in my presentation were definitely AI generated. Um, the pacemakers and the ICDs look nothing like those images. Um, so it's worth noting these things and if you're particularly interested in it, do feel free to have a look at my blog posts. I have got screenshots of what these things look like and uh, where they're located bit more information if you require. So thank you for watching both my presentation on Scotland but also my heart disease and I hope you've learned lots about OpenAI, how you can integrate that into your own services and solutions. If you've got ideas wondering how you can build stuff do let me know in the comments below and like always make sure you've liked and subscribed. Anyway thanks very much for watching and see you again sometime soon. Cheers!